Welcome to the Arts Council of Surrey Community Gallery here at the Newton Cultural Centre. My name is Wendy Mould. I am the producer of Gallery Talks. And today I am here to introduce our featured artists for the month of August, Lynn Gilman and Carla Patterson. Lynn and Carla's show can be seen here until August 30th in person or online at the Arts Council of Surrey.ca. Lynn and Carla's show is called Stories in Photograph and Stitch. Lynn is the photographer and Carla is the textile artist. They have collaborated together to create a collection of narrative photographs and textile pieces. Pieces speak to each other and enliven the story that they tell. I find the story very intriguing. It is really interesting to see the subjects that they have chosen and the materials that they use to create and tell their stories. I'm really looking forward to talking to the artists about their show and about their work. So, let's go beat the artists. Hi, Carla. Hi, it's, Wendy. It's really great to talk to you today about your show, and we're going to meet Lynn as well. And I understand the two of you have collaborated to create the show. Can you kind of explain what that means with some of the pieces we have here? Sure. So um, Lynn and I are next door neighbors and we've become great friends, and especially through COVID when we didn't see many other people. We still saw each other. And uh, Lynn has been doing photography for a long time and I've started doing uh, textile art in the last couple of years. And we would share our work with one another and then um, we came to realize that in fact we, we share interests. So we share interests, especially in storytelling. And um, that's what we've tried to highlight in this exhibit today. And it, there are different ways in which we've collaborated. Uh, in some cases, like this one, I've done something which has then inspired Lynn. Um, also the reverse. Uh, and then also we found when we brought our work together, we could sort of see connections in theme or color or form. So this pairing, um, this piece of mine is called Baby Shoe Unfinished. I found this uh, fabric unfinished baby shoe in my mom's things. I've been going through my mom's things for the last few years. It was just folded up uh, and I unfolded it. I recognized it was a baby shoe. And it led me to wonder why this piece, why this little shoe was never finished. Mm -hmm. And so that led me to think about projects that aren't finished, especially projects around babies and pregnancy and, and so on. So I pulled this piece, Baby Shoe Unfinished. Um, I tried to give it the appearance of kind of like a, a, a museum piece that you would look down at. These are some vintage items I found amongst my mom's things. This is a little piece of eyelet that I can tell from the price tag was purchased at a Dutch market a long time ago. Anyway, I shared this piece with Lynn and she liked it and then it inspired her to do something with baby clothes, baby dresses, and so she's done this beautiful piece called Dream Time. That is so cool. Well, thank you. Okay, yeah. well, let's look at the next cluster. Okay. Now, this looks like quite an interesting cluster, and this is more about family history and built up through textile. That's right. Okay, how does this work? Well, um, so, you know, as I was going through my mother's things, I found a lot of photographs, and I decided it would be nice to actually highlight them in my art. And so <clears throat> this first piece I've done here is a story about my grandfather and his family. And I realized as I was looking at these photos and thinking about how to do this piece, that my grandfather crossed the Atlantic five times uh, in a 25 year period. So he was born in the Netherlands, in Holland, traveled as a young man to America, had a farm, prospered, then wanted to get married, wanted to marry a Dutch woman, went back to Holland, they got married. The two of them went over again, settled this time in South Dakota. The farm was great, they had three children. But then my grandmother became really ill and my um, grandfather took her to various doctors, including to the Mayo Clinic and I was told that he had to take her back to Holland or she might not make it. So back they went to Holland with three little ones in tow. My aunt was just a couple months old. Settled in Holland, um, 
And then the war broke out, so they were stuck there. And then after the war, my grandfather really wanted to go back to, to North America. So they traveled on this ship, the Tabinta. This is my mom here as a, as a four-year-old, and this is my mom at 17. They had a terrible first year in Alberta. They had to work on a sugar beet farm, lived in a shack, it was awful. Uh, and then the next year, my, my mom said, okay, that's it, I'm going to BC. You can come with me or not. Uh, and so the whole family traveled to BC and so Oh wow, they, they yeah. so much there. Right? Yeah. And now what are the other parts of the cluster? So here? this piece um, chronologically would actually fit right here. So this is my mom and her three siblings. Uh, this was around the time, just around the time that um, the war broke out in Holland. Um, I finished this piece as the war was starting in Ukraine. And reflecting on this piece and reflecting on the current political situation, um, I thought about how in my mom's family and many other families, you know, the par their parents had no idea about what was going to happen, but at least they were able to provide each of their children with a warm coat. Yes. So I called it warm coats. My goodness, isn't that, you know, think yeah. today what kids want from their parents. <laughs> warm coat isn't even on the list. <laughs> Okay, what else have we got so this, here? This third one, uh, refers back to my grandfather. Uh, so this is 1955, he's settled um, in Pit Meadows. Um, they have a farm, and uh, my mom happened to be the executor for my grandfather. So as I'm going through all these uh, family remembrances and photos, I found a little paper notebook uh, written by my grandfather, and this page I thought was particularly, I don't know, heartwarming somehow. So it's eggs sold in 1955, uh, different dates, 21st of December, five and a half dozen, $3.41. And as a little girl, I used to go and stay on the farm and uh, help him feed the chickens. And so I thought, okay, I'd like, rather than put a picture of me, I found this little vintage, um, embroidery pattern that was that was um, in the public domain and so I used that and added some chicken tracks and so this is this is part of one of my childhood memories. Oh well my goodness these pictures really and the textile really do tell quite the story behind them don't thank they? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well thank you very much I'm looking Thanks, forward lady. to hear about uh, Carla's work now and how her photography has developed in the works of this. Sorry oh. Lynn's work. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. So, hi, Lynn. It's hi, really uh, nice to meet you. You too. And chat with you today. Yeah. And um, after this, it's nice to learn more about your, your show. So this is the first piece that kind of sparked the whole collaborative process. Eh? Well, yes, actually it is. Um, I, I, this is part of my Still Life series um, and my Still Life and Vintage series. And uh, as Carla had mentioned, or maybe we go to me first, but Carla and I are neighbors. And so we got into the habit of showing and sharing our work with one another. We would run kind of across the garden and say, hi, Carla, or hi, Lynn, look what I've done now. And so Carla was very fascinated with this, and she picked up on the threads and the vintage um, uh, part of the of the still life and decided that she could then in the hostitchery mirror some of that vintage um, look and so she has gone on to um, uh, complement my photograph uh, with her own um, spools and threads and and works of art in stitchery it certainly tells the story of anyone that sews, they can certainly see that this is, yes, you know, yeah. right there. I mean, those yeah. tiny spools of thread. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yes. But with the with the photograph too, um, I was very interested in. I was at the time I was painting with light, and so a lot of this photograph is taken with the use of a flashlight as well. So very complicated for me to get this photograph because I had to stand at the corner of the, of the room with a flashlight. I had my remote control with my, with my camera and, um, but everything worked and um, I, I loved the end result. 
Well, it certainly takes me back in time, that's for yeah. sure. You, yeah. you were both very successful in that. Well, let's see your uh, next piece. Okay. Very interesting. This is definitely vintage photography. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this got moved into textile as well. Let's hear your story. Um, at Christmas time, my husband knew that I was in love with vintage photography and that my, my focus was on still life vintage. And so for a Christmas present, he bought me two vintage scales, which I loved and knew that I had to incorporate in my photography. But as I have looked at still life photography, some things I find are very obvious and have been overdone. And so hence, I had to think of some way to do it differently, hence the fish. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Now, what does that look like in textile? What nurse did you Well, um, and then what happened when Carla had seen this fish, um, she immediately asked me for a smaller print Mm -hmm. um, so that she could maybe add some textiles to it. So she took it home and um, has added the, the, um, uh, the cross stitch to the middle of the fish. I like to think of it as um, net fish or <laughs> <laughs> fish in a net, right. but she has called it cross stitch fish. Oh my. Um, and so this is part of our collaboration. This is, you know, our getting together and and just inspiring one another during those dark days of COVID when we were all locked inside. Right. Okay, well, let's see. So, vintage uh, photography is not your only field of focus. What else are you working on? What attracts well, you? Still, still in the realms of still life, um, I constantly search for new things to photograph and new things to give me inspiration and new passions. And so this series um, came about from a series of, of just eight and a half by 11 Xerox paper rolled into spills and then, and then photographed, um, catching the light, um, which was very important, and then taking into Photoshop and, and transferring into um, a scene as you will, or, or into a picture. And so I just wanted to show that from this paper spill, you can actually see the little corners of my paper in this photograph here, which I call symmetry, because this, this is a photograph where I, I, I took it, I put it into quarters, and each quarter is inverted horizontally and vertically, and so that it makes this perfect symmetry of oh, paper. Very interesting. Yes, yes. it's a cool, cool design, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And I have, of course, the other two that go with it. Um, again, you can see the spill of paper and in the fish um, swimming against the stream. Again, one spill of paper kind of duplicated and duplicated and duplicated with one fish swimming against the stream and a ripple from one of my old landscape photographies <laughs> in the background. So I've, I've enjoyed doing oh work my. like this. So this, this yes. is your other This world. is my other world. It, yeah. I still consider it still life, so it's still still life, but right. it just gives me so much enjoyment to do this kind of thing. Right. Okay, and I understand you have another area. This is interesting. This is another area of focus for you. This is another area of focus for me, one that I find, or one that has come about to mean a lot to me and, and has made me quite emotional. Um, I have been invited and I have attended several powwows within British Columbia and we've all, through the news and through media in this last year, talked a lot about um, uh, our First Nations plight and so I wanted to to show great respect when I, when I took these photographs and when I produced these photographs. This photograph in particular I called Through the Trees and puts me in mind, for some reason or other, puts me in mind of the, the residential school um, disaster, if you will, um, that we've been hearing so much about. And I, I my heart goes out, um, to our First Nations people and to their plight. Mm -hmm. um, 
I will not sell these photographs. They are not for sale. They are too emotional and too personal. But, and I, one other thing I did want to mention about them was that I purposely did them in sepia. Um, and I have actually um, given a nod to Edward S. Curtis, who was one of the first photographers of um, our First Nations peoples many years ago, and I have admired his photographs for years. And so a lot of his photographs were black and white and sepia. Um, I, I think the man um, was misunderstood a little bit. And so I have given a nod to Edward S. Curtis in, in these photographs. But as you can see, they, this one in particular, they mean a lot to me. And I, and I have great respect for Well, thank you very much. Uh... Carl Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> I um, have really enjoyed talking with you today and I look forward to seeing uh, some of your work in the future and of course uh, Carlos as well. Yep. I'm sure the two of you are going to be collaborating way. Oh, on... we'll be hopping back and forwards through that fence for as long as we possibly can. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Lynn and Carla, for sharing your ideas and art with me today. I really enjoyed learning about your passion and how your projects are coming together. Lynn and Carla's show can be seen here at the Newton Cultural Centre until August 30th or online at the artscouncilofsurrey.ca.